Hey, welcome back to our second episode of Talking with Nuclear Goth, and I still need to find a better title for that. I just... whatever. Just gonna throw this out there right now. This is a long one, and you can tell by the size of the red bar under me. So, this week, I figured I'd do a topic on something a lot of gamers might find very recognizable. A general looking at of id Software. And to clear this up right now, since I know there's a lot of confusion on the name, it's id Software. Not ID, not ID, and the name is always in lowercase, except for the S in software, that one's still capitalized. <laughs> the name comes from the id in our minds, which is, according to Freud, the portion of our brain that is dedicated to acting at this very moment. Almost like our primal senses, making sure that we have what we need at this moment, and powers our basic survival needs and such. There seems to be universal confusion when companies name themselves after brains, like when Blizzard was once called Silicon and Synapse, and nobody got it. And it's a very appropriate name if you look at some of the games its software has made. Wolfenstein, Doom, and Quake are all very quick shooters that rely heavily on knowing what you have to do now and act to survive. But they had that name before Wolfenstein's birth, didn't they? I do suppose Commander Keen was trying to survive his endeavors against the Martians, as child-friendly as they may have been. But I digress. I love Commander Keen as much as the next guy. Assuming the next guy wasn't John Romero, who hung Keen in hell and made you blast his agonizing body to bits in order to escape. Speaking of Romero, he's one of the people we know id most for, and making the very first first-person shooter, Wolfenstein 3D. It was new, it was revolutionary, it was violent, and it was controversial as all hell. But it's dealt with a lot of controversy, so we'll jump out of that topic for later. I also found that id Software's interpretation of World War II... bizarre, to say the least. But hey, if you ever have a history test on World War II in school, don't pull an all-nighter playing through Wolf 3D and Spear of Destiny, because Hitler did not have a mecha suit, he and his Nazi battalion were not defeated by a single American invading the fictional castle Wolfenstein, which is actually based on the Wubelsberg castle, and I don't recall at any point Hitler trying to recover a mystical spear that supposedly pierced the side of Jesus Christ and will grant its wielder immortality. Seriously. And then in Castle Wolfenstein, they revamped Wolf 2009, there's zombies, Mutants from hell, laser cannons and shit everywhere. I mean, what kind of history books did Carmack and Romero read when they were in college? After the success of Wolf 3D, we all know the focus was turned on to making Doom, the groundbreaking FPS at the time. And <laughs> what can I say about Doom that hasn't been said before? There's a ton of merchandise around this game, there's a port on every console and their mothers, and even a full-length, if not mediocre, live-action film based on the game. And only about 40 seconds of that film resembled what I actually went to the theater looking for. Doom was actually pounded on for getting quite a bit of heat for a game based on uh, Hell, which a lot of folks said it was promoting Satanism with its demonic imagery. Which is weird, because the game is about escaping the clutches of Hell and blasting demons away with a rather large array of weapons. And honestly, I love this setting. I wish more games would take a place within a hellish realm with demons and devils, like Painkiller. I actually think that's one of the more subtle reasons why the original Painkillers did so well. The nostalgia of fighting in purgatory and hell we once knew from Doom. And you didn't hear it from me, but Doom was Special Guest Tom's very first game ever. Finally, we step into my favorite realm in the id Software library, Quake. By this time, Romero had left id Software to go do his own thing and sadly failed pretty badly. <coughs> Die, Katana. Oh, how the mighty have fallen, I suppose. Carmack and his boys put together a new engine for the game they really only intended on being a big multiplayer hit, and then threw in a mishmash of random levels created not on rhyme or reason, but ideas and thoughts for the single player. I kinda like that. Especially when Quake's Lovecraftian atmosphere, and in hindsight, your internal it doesn't care whether or not what's happening around you makes rhyme or reason, your only thought is survival. How am I going to get out of here? And I think that was the beauty of Quake. Plus, the original Quake pretty much is pretty much where Valve started. The game was modified by hundreds of gamers, and one such mod being the original Team Fortress and Counter-Strike. Even Half-Life 1 was built on the old Quake engine before Source was made. And even though id Software hasn't been doing its best lately, 
Quake Wars came coming out around the same time as Team Fortress 2, Quake Live actually being a little less profitable than Id would have liked, actually making them lose money, Wolfenstein 2009 only getting mediocre reviews and The Rage being a bit too ambitious for what some critics found it was worth. I know none of us can help back, can help but look back at what Id was once was. A true cornerstone in video gaming history and culture. And I cannot wait for Doom 4 after seeing the leaked screenshots on Face Punch. Ah, that's a bit it, about it for today's topic, you guys. I stuttered a bit, but it's all good. I got my point across, and you guys stuck around through the whole five, six minutes of it. So thanks for watching this week's episode of Talk of Nuclear Goth, and I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody!